we have all heard the rumors, but what do you think that the odds are that Oklahoma State running back Ollie Gordon actually enters the transfer portal when it opens on April 15th? Better yet, what are the odds that he becomes an Oklahoma Sooner through the transfer portal? Hmm. Well, you know what they say about the SEC, don't you? Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football's Sooner Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and if you love college football, especially Oklahoma football, you know you're in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of Hall of Fame College Football. Hey, before we get started, I just want to say I have no intimate knowledge telling me that these rumors there is no sources that are out there telling me that there is fire behind this smoke uh, saying that not only will Ollie Gordon enter the transfer portal on April 15th when it opens, but that he'll ultimately transfer to Oklahoma. I've basically heard everything that everybody else has heard, whether it be through Twitter, YouTube, or on Heartland College Sports, who had a piece out that they called a doomsday scenario in jest piece ollie gordon transfers to oklahoma i've heard all that same as you have there was obviously uh pg had his show yesterday talking about the rumors out there and whether or not oklahoma was either looking or intending to offer as well and there were rumors going all the way back to when the portal opened in december following Oklahoma State's loss in the Big 12 championship game to Texas, lingering on past their win in the bowl game um, in Houston over Texas A&M. From what I understand, there were offers out there, uh, and a number of programs inquired about his services. Most notably, according to Cody Stovall, I believe Missouri and Arkansas may have been heavily in the mix there. Eli Drinkwitz has obviously been, you know, he, he likes to play around in the portal quite a bit and tamper a little bit from what we understand. Peyton Green. But ultimately, the OSU NIL Collective, according, according to Cody anyway, was able to put the money together to match whatever offer was out there and keep him in the program at least long enough to get past that portal closing following the national championship game. Since then, a lot of stuff has happened. Most notably, there was a court ruling um, that involved Tennessee, the University of Virginia, and the NCAA that basically the judge said you can no longer limit student-athletes' ability to transfer. But, I mean, let's be serious. The options are going to be there for him, and they're going to stay there for a guy like that. This is a guy that won the Doak Walker Award. And to be honest, there's quite a few coaches around the country that would probably utilize Ollie Gordon's skills a little bit better than Casey Dunn and Mike Gundy. Just saying. So shut your mouth. <laughs> Hi, Sherman. <laughs> that guy, he, I know you know that guy still gets triggered every time he even hears my name. So, hi, Sherman. <laughs> Look, truth is, I understand that this is a triggering and this is not a thing that you want to hear from fans of Big Brother if you're an Oklahoma State fan. I don't care. The truth is, there's a reason to talk about this. There's smoke enough out there to talk about this. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about it. I'm going to give you the reasons that I feel like it is a possibility. But again, I am working from the assumption 
But and you know what they say about assumptions that Ollie will return to Stillwater. Stillwater. Sorry. Um, we'll work from that assumption. But the truth is, there's a number of reasons why you could see him leaving, not just leaving, but going to Oklahoma too. Now, before I get into it, let's let's get start with what was said on April 2nd by Brian Clinton of Heartland College Sports. Now, just to remind you, Heartland is a media company focused and solely using its coverage to promote Big 12 sports, right? Potential nightmare scenarios, Ollie Gordon to Oklahoma. The post-spring transfer portal window is coming, and many voices around college football are warning folks that a storm is coming. As he says on here, Josh Pate has warned us on multiple occasions that something big is coming, and it could be what finally sparks change in the sport. So what kind of things would we have to see to make the Caden Proctor saga forgettable? We're talking about the stuff of nightmares for some fan bases. So that tells you that the possibility is some of this stuff could be that crazy, right? I mean, you know, you could see something as wild as Ollie Gordon to Oklahoma, right? I mean, I could see it. So shut your mouth. <laughs> No, God, please, no! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Wait, 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 wait! Bottom line is, we don't know, but that's what you've kind of heard out of Oklahoma State fans on Twitter saying this is all bullshit, that this is all rumor, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sure I understand why that that's what you want to believe, right? The truth is... There are a number of reasons that you should be at least a little bit worried because I think everybody should be. I don't think that this I don't think that this is going to be centered around just Oklahoma State. I don't think it's going to be centered around any program. I think there's a lot of things that could happen. And if you're listening to Josh Pate, there is going to be a lot of things happen, right? But let me give you my reasons for why Ollie might leave and he might go to OU. Let's just do it. Number one, because he can. Because he can't, okay? As I said a few minutes ago, the NCAA has been rendered powerless against limiting player movement due to that court ruling that basically said you can't do it because by doing so, you're also limiting a student-athlete's ability to profit from their name, image, and likeness. They can't increase their visibility if they're sitting on the bench or, you know, not getting to play or whatever reason they have. There's nothing that you, that universities at this moment can do to be able to keep somebody like Ollie Gordon from leaving. That brings us to the second reason he could possibly leave uh, and go to Oklahoma for that matter. It's for a bigger payday. Oklahoma State has always used the excuse of not being able to compete with regard to recruiting and on the field with Oklahoma, particularly in football, on its supposed lack of resources in comparison to those of Oklahoma. Not just Oklahoma, but to the rest of big-time college football pertains to recruiting, and it certainly would come into play now in what, hey man, we call it what it is, it's the pay-for-play era, if you want to listen to what they're saying. That brings me to the third reason you could see Ollie Gordon leaving. Not only is there a, quote, lack of resources, but Mike Gundy's attitude towards paying student-athletes NIL money isn't good. And not only that, but he and the Oklahoma State SID office's restrictive nature when it comes to players making appearances being interviewed by anybody other than their elite group of media outlets, such as ESPN, Fox, uh, On3, I think is one of them. And then, of course, like the Tulsa World and the Oklahoma. Cody had, what, three, three or four player interviews that he's done over the last month with Oklahoma State students, guys that are just coming in. Um, Garrett Rangel, who is, you know, in the competition for starting quarterback position. And he received a letter, uh, email from the SID's office saying to cease and desist. 
And he had 12 more of these interviews lined up. That is a clear example to me of why I believe Oklahoma State will never be the class of the Big 12 even now, that Oklahoma and Texas are gone. We know that he's made it clear that, you know, as of last year, you know, there was meetings that they had with Pokes with a Purpose um, and whatever other NIO collectives of, of the way that they wanted to make sure that they could compete in the new Big 12 by upping the ante and and paying players. And he balked at it and would he was saying that he would rather continue to get better facilities at OSU. That tells you how out of touch he is. His refusal to evolve his thinking in regards to marketers, media companies, having access to his players, allowing his players to make appearances on whether it be a podcast on YouTube or another entity that isn't Fox or ESPN, it's an opportunity. The more that they can get on shows and show that they have value in being able to maybe be a social media influencer, a marketer, and make money that way, look, that's actually hurting your ability to keep these guys around. Hey, guys, I just wanted to take a moment to shout out our partners at Hall of Fame College Football, Mint Mobile. Look, I am super grateful for this partnership with Mint Mobile because, let's be serious, if you're anything like me, you're overpaying for your wireless service. But with Mint Mobile, you can get everything you get with Big Wireless, aside from the big price tag, for as low as $15 a month. Speed, coverage, data, 5G access, mobile hotspot, it's all available right there on Mint Mobile and for way less than you're used to paying at your big wireless carrier. How do they do it? Well, they basically just reimagined the entire wireless experience. No more dealing with a pushy salesperson. Everything you do with Mint Mobile is right through its app on the phone that you already own. You can literally go and purchase your service and activate it right now. TryMintMobile.com slash HOF is our partner link. And if you sign up today, you can get three months of unlimited talk, text, and data for just 45 bucks. That's 15 bucks a month for the best package they have for three months. If you could get it with Big Wireless, you can get it right here on Mint Mobile. Check it out and thank me later. Ollie Gordon that I know of doesn't, I mean, he may have gotten something from that collective, but a guy that won the Doak Walker award, you would think he would be in line for something bigger than that. And, and even if it's not a national thing, a Doak Walker award-winning running back should have every business that wants to market, they would be probably fawning over Ollie Gordon among other players as well, right? He still is strict in limiting that availability. And not only is that hurt his, op his program's opportunity to keep a guy like Ollie Gordon around, but it, I believe that in the future, it's going to hurt your ability to bring guys in to the fold because kids talk about that. And it's an important thing for them these days that they have the ability to get paid. They want to have the visibility. These players that we're talking about, these 12 players with Cody Stovall, they were actually approaching him about getting on there they'd heard good things about his show they they liked his show in the way in the format of it and they felt like that was an opportunity for them to get visibility right there's another reason why we heard that osu's collective uh put together the money to fight off mizzou or arkansas or whoever it was uh during the december portal window that closed after the national championship game but what if someone like say oklahoma comes in with an offer in the spring portal that's double that. And it could be anybody, but I'm just talking about Oklahoma. I mean, it could be a lot of people. You know, I would venture to say there's a lot of programs in the Big 12 that would love to have him. So he could at least theoretically leave the pokes and become a Sooner. Reason number five. As I mentioned earlier, predictions of impending portal anarchy are everywhere coming from all corners of college football. As Josh Pate said, 
this is going to shake college football to its absolute core. And it should spark real change, as we just saw on that Heartland article as well. In view of the fact that the Caden Proctor story included a supposed $100,000 payment for transferring to Iowa, which I don't think he has to give back from everything I can understand, but he is leaving. He, he never suited up. He never practiced with them. Um, so he will not pay it back. Plus, and even that isn't going to be all that shocking by the time this is all done, if you're listening to what Pate's saying. I mean, look, is it that far-fetched that Ollie Gordon could be in the portal too? I don't care what you paid him. You may not even get the money back. Finally, the sixth reason, if he isn't getting increased visibility, because you're not allowing him to do interviews that he wants to do. I'm not saying it would be with Cody. I don't know if he was on that list of 12. He might have been. If he's not getting that increased visibility because of restrictions between Mike Gundy and the SID, and he's not getting endorsements that are going to get his money up higher than what you're looking at, is he really willing to risk not making the new 12-team college football playoff to stay at Oklahoma State. Look, fans and Mike Gundy have been very upbeat, almost giddy about their 2024 prospects of winning the Big 12 championship, making an appearance in the college football playoff. Because they've got, you know, largely an unchanged roster. They got most of their biggest, important, most important players coming back to the team this season. And, you know, they lost in the championship game. But Las Vegas has the win total for Oklahoma State at seven and a half. I've been telling you guys for a while now that I believe the Big 12 is going to cannibalize itself. They should have probably taken the offer that Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti had for them to get guaranteed two spots. I'm going to tell you now. I think it's theoretically possible that the two teams playing, and not theoretically possible, I think it's highly plausible that the two teams playing in the Big 12 championship game this year will have at minimum two losses, and I wouldn't surprise me if they were both 9-3 and three going into the game. This is a league that is going to cannibalize itself. There's probably more, not probably, there is more parity in this Big 12 than there is in any other power conference. For everybody thinking that Oklahoma State is the team to beat, they could be. But here's the deal. Let's think about all these teams that are there. Utah, Kyle Whittingham, one of the best coaches in the country. They won back-to-back Pac-12 championships heading into last season when it was won by Washington. And they also have Cam Rising coming back at quarterback to play his 15th year in college football. They are... The odds-on favorite, I would think, to win the conference. Um, a lot of people love Arizona um, with Fafita, McMillan. They've got, a, they've got a large amount of their team coming back. That team did beat Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl, and, but they do have a new coach, so we'll see kind of what happens with that as well. You've got programs like, look, I believe that BYU is a contender and will continue to be a contender, and they have one of the more respected coaches in the, con- in the country, Kalani Sataki, Kansas coached by another one of the best coaches in the country, Lance Leipold, who, since he got to town, um, has done nothing but improve year after year after year. He turned down the Washington job. There's reports that he turned down an opportunity to coach at Texas A&M as well uh, to stay in Lawrence, Kansas. They did give him a nice raise. Um, And he's got Jalen Daniels coming back, who, if he stays healthy, he's a Heisman contender. No two ways around it. Kansas State. You know, Chris Kleiman has been fabulous as well since he got to Manhattan. Um, They have a young new quarterback that they really like a lot. They were in the running for the Big 12 championship all the way up until the end last year as well. Okay. Sonny Dykes and TCU played for the national championship two years ago. They stumbled a bit last year, uh, losing all those super super seniors, but Sonny's a good coach and they're going to recruit well at TCU. There's another solid program. You know, I, I think that Baylor's struggling a bit, but Dave Aranda has won a New Year's Six game since he's got there. We'll see if he can bounce back as well. But again, another strong program. Matt Campbell at Iowa State. 
second year quarterback as well. Look, they've got an opportunity to step up again. They were in the running for a Big 12 championship game spot as well late into the season last year. Um, you've got the new the newcomers in Colorado. Coach Prime got himself a Heisman contender as well in his son and quarterback Shador Sanders, who, you know, his numbers were right up there with the best QBs in the country a year ago. He only played 11 games, still had over 3,000 passing yards, only had, I believe, three turnovers the entire season, and that was playing behind a broken offensive line. We'll see what they are, but they're not going to be an easy out for anybody, I can tell you that. Um, you also have, uh, again, I think that Arizona and Utah are probably the two Pac-12 schools coming in that have the best opportunity year one, but Arizona State, Kenny Dillingham is one of the most respected offensive minds in the country. Um, he's got a second year, now second year, five-star quarterback in Jaden Rashada coming in as well. There's an opportunity there. West Virginia had a big bounce back season last year under Neil Brown. You have Houston who, look, they've got a coach that did more with less, you know, won a Cotton Bowl over USC at Tulane in Willie Fritz. You got to expect that they're going to be pretty good, if not this season, coming soon, right? We'll find out as Oklahoma fans what they're about because we get them in game two of the year, I believe, or game three, man. UCF, fertile recruiting grounds down there. Gus Malzahn, uh, you know, they've gotten, they started looking a little bit better. He got a tough, good quarterback and KJ Jefferson to transfer in. They're going to be a tough out as well. So here's the thing. All that being said, this is going to be that, you know, cannibalize yourselves conference. Cincinnati has the ability. We saw them in the playoff a few years back. Uh, you know, look, I really don't see a lot of difference. Look, Texas Tech was a team that everybody had as a dark horse to win the Big 12 a year ago. Were they maybe just a year behind schedule? We'll see. Joey McGuire's recruiting well. I think they like what he's doing out there, but it's time to find out. But this is another team that could definitely contend for one of those spots in the championship game. Is it? too much to believe that they could possibly have a couple of 10 and two or nine and three teams playing for the championship game. Look, if you don't make it into the playoff and you're not playing in the highly visible big 10 or the highly visible sec, how good is that for you? If you're Ollie Gordon, particularly if you're not really able to be seen as much, you know, you're not endorsing a bunch of local products or maybe you're not even endorsing anything on a national level. And what are your chances of winning the Heisman? If you go to a place like Oklahoma and you become and you're the starter there and you're playing in the SEC, chances are you could go to the SEC championship game. Missouri, the best thing about their 11 and 2 season last year was probably aside from Luther Burton was their running back play. They're replacing running backs. There's a reason why they were hot after Ollie following the season. Look, even if you don't win the SEC championship game and go to the playoff, you're going to get seen week after week if you're Oklahoma, Missouri, even somebody like Tennessee. Hell, I could see Georgia making a push for somebody. I could see anybody in the conference doing it, by the way, Alabama. You go and you win nine or ten games as a part of one of those programs and you play for an SEC championship or you get into a – look, you, if you get into the playoff, you're probably going to be up for Heisman. Last year he had 1,700 yards and he finished seventh playing at Oklahoma State. Seventh. You get in the playoff with the SEC team, you probably win it. Just saying. It's not as cut and dried that he's coming back to Stillwater as you think it is. He may not be going to Oklahoma. I don't know that Oklahoma wants him. They've got a loaded running back room. But that's another thing. You are not as loaded at Oklahoma State and don't really have the ability to load up at Oklahoma State the way Oklahoma is or the way other SEC programs are, contenders. If you lost Ollie Gordon, what do you do? Oklahoma can lose guys in the portal that don't think they're going to get playing time in that running back room or in the receiver room for that matter because there's other guys. And they probably wouldn't skip a beat because they do have so much depth there. What do you do if you're Oklahoma State? 
It all hinges on the on the starters that you got coming back on whether or not you can win or not. If Ollie Gordon goes away, what happens to Oklahoma State? This is the exact reason I believe that you see the Pokes continue to be the Pokes. This is who they are. This is what they're going to be. Does he leave Oklahoma State for OU? I don't know. I don't, again, I don't know that Oklahoma necessarily wants him. And I know there's a lot of rumors out there. But I would tell you this. They wanted more than they got out of their running back room a year ago. And look, if they aren't going to get more than that, I look, for, if he enters the portal, I would think that they would make a big push for him just if for no other reason but to keep him out of another SEC school that they're going to have to play off their roster. Maybe even just to be petty and keep him off of yours, Okie Light. Again, though, look, you know what they say about the SEC? Let me know what you think in the comment section. Uh, is there a possibility that you could see him not just transferring, but transferring to OU? I don't think it's as far-fetched as a lot of people do, but you let me know what you think. Trigger away.